Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today's video comes as a request from Nico Ni, who wanted to know how I go about making a glass material, which I thought was an interesting topic. We actually got to chatting and I talked about a few different things. Uh, in particular, translucent materials of almost any kind are going to be uh, taxing because they're going to require about triple the uh, the, the rendering uh, the render passes of uh, a regular uh, lit surface material. And this is basically because uh, the engine has to render the pixel where the glass is, uh, the, the the pixel, that same pixel, but beyond the glass, like at the surface that's that's between the camera and that glass, and then that same pixel again combined with the with the glass overlaying over the over that back pixel. So there's a lot of calculation that goes on. So I'd recommend using uh, a glass material very very sparingly, and only if you absolutely have to. Uh, you might notice that in games such as uh, GTA V. A lot of the buildings don't have uh, glass windows. If you can see this mostly at night, I think uh, they're just emissive textures that sort of glow and, and have a sort of directional shape depending on which angle you look at them from. Or in a game like Amnesia, where in, in that castle, all those uh, windows, similar sort of thing, like they're, they're emissive to give sort of an impression that the moonlight's coming in, uh, but actually no no real transparency is, is being used. But before I get started, I would like to have a quick uh, shout out here. I would very much appreciate it if you guys did me a favor and check out Beer Games on uh, YouTube. A friend of the channel, Jay Beard, he contacted me. Noticed uh, he's getting a pretty close there to a thousand subscribers. I think he would really appreciate it if he hit 1k. So I thought we'd try and give him a little bit of a bump there. So it's not too much trouble. I'll leave a link to the channel down in the top comments of this video. Just to, just go check him out and have a look at what he's got to offer. He has a great way of explaining things. So don't be a stranger. Uh, give Beard Games a look. Give him a subscribe. And with that out of the way, let's uh, jump into the video. So the first thing we want to do is come into our content browser here and just right click. It will make ourselves a new material. Let's call this one glass underscore mat. And then we will open it up. So the first thing we need to do here is uh, set some values in our base material. So with either our base node here activated or with nothing activated, we get our base uh, material, material settings over here on the left. And what we need to set it to in the blend mode is translucent. We want to set it to two-sided, although you can go one-sided uh, if you want to, it just depends on usage. And then down a little further, uh, if we scroll here, we find tra the translucency category. We need to change this lighting mode to a surface translucency volume. And that's all that we need to set in our base uh, material here. So we can go ahead and start adding some nodes. And I'll even, I'll pull this down here a bit so that we can kind of see what's going on. Let's first of all, uh, hold in three and click. We'll get ourselves a Oh, what's happened? Nope, nothing. There we go. A three vector. We'll right click, convert this to a parameter, call it tint. And we're gonna set this to just, let's say just a, a white color and plug this straight into base color. Easy enough so far. Next thing, let's hold in one and click our graph just to get ourselves a constant. We wanna plug this in to roughness. With our constant selected, hit control and W to duplicate. Or you can hit one and click if you want just another constant. And we want to make this a value of one and plug this into metallic and specular. Okay, so far so good. The next thing we want to do is uh, sort of actually make our, our glass effect uh, work for us. So let's hold in S and click for a scalar parameter, which looks like that, where we can give it a name, a bit like a constant. We'll call this one our Fresnel exponent because we're going to use a Fresnel uh, shader. So right click here, type in Fresnel. It's spelt Fresnel, but uh, don't let it fool here. Uh, we'll plug this into exponent here. We'll make our exponent something like uh, 0 0.5 and then plug our exponent uh, into, our Fresnel rather, into opacity. All right, so this gets us uh, most of the way there really with our initial uh, initial shader. You can see here, see these strange artifacts, these lines here? This is caused by the two-sided uh, the two-sided option. If we disable this and we'll let it just recompile in the preview window, you can see that that's been taken care of just by culling out those back faces. There it is, there we can see. So here we have a nice, uh, nice glass. And it's here that we can start, uh, well, using our glass material. So let's hit save. And we'll just let, uh, let our material save here. There we go. And let's jump back into our content browser here. Let's right click here. We'll make a little instance for our glass. And over in, uh, let's see, place actors. We need to find ourselves a plane. Drag this into the world. So let's put this up. Zoom in on here, drop our instance onto there. You can see here is our glass material. We have some nice, uh, nice shiny reflective glass. Of course, without two-sided enabled, you're only going to be able to see through it one way. But uh, we can always re-enable this back in our uh, material here. In fact, let's do this. We'll see how this looks. Remember to save it as well. And then hop back uh, into our console browser. So now we can see through this glass 
uh, from both sides. And we can even open up our instance here. Uh, let's drop this over here. Give ourselves a little bit of space. So we have, I mean, by default, uh, we've made ourselves the uh, the tint value here. So we can sort of darken uh, that reflection if we want to. Uh, we can even give it a shade <laughs> so we can get some crazy effects here. I tend to just use it just in grayscale if we either want that super reflective uh, kind of finish to it or we can we can dull it down a bit sort of as as required. And the Fresnel is going to give it that oblique uh, kind of reflection that, that uh, the glass has. Uh, but with that said, oh, and we can check out our exponent here too. So we can either make our, our Fresnel sort of less transparent or we can make it almost entirely translucent as well. So let's save this. We'll drop back into our material though and we'll talk about a few different things. One of them is the refraction uh, value down here. If we hold an S and uh, get ourselves another scalar parameter, let's type in refraction, but I'll leave it at zero, uh, although we will plug it, uh, plug it in here. We'll have a look at that uh, just in a moment. For now though, the next thing that we'll look at is uh, normal. So uh, translucent materials handle normals in the same way that, uh, that a regular surface material does, except there's transparency. So let's hold in T and click, get ourselves a texture sample. And the texture that we'll, that we'll use, uh, let's say we'll use the orange peel uh, mask from my texture pack. And I will link to the Gumroad link in the description where you can pick up the texture pack that I use in a lot of my videos. Um, if you don't already have that though, we'll go here, we'll uh, open up our texture. Uh, there we go. So it looks a bit like this, uh, literally like some, some orange peel. I just used some brushes and painted around a bit, made sure that it tiled and we have a nice, uh, nice orange peel uh, texture to use in our, in our materials. I'm just going to grab the red channel here. We'll just plug this straight into normal. We'll see how this looks first. Um, oh, uh, that would be the refraction. Let's actually just disconnect this for a second. Um, so we go up here and hit save. And uh, yeah, so there you can see there is some ripply, we get like a little ripply uh, orange peel effect, like a textured effect uh, on our glass. A bit like a, I don't know if you've ever seen like a shower door kind of has. <laughs> Uh, or some of them do that. That kind of that kind of finish on it. But we're getting this weird swell, and it occurs to me that I am using a mask uh, in the normal slot when I should be using a normal. So we'll grab the orange peel normal. Uh, and we'll see if the bread channel works for us. Or if we do need to use all three channels, let's see. Okay, so with just the the, the red channel, we're getting a kind of wacky effect uh, with our normal here. But anyway, uh, let's see how it looks with all three channels. And also, while we're here, let's hold in U and grab our texture coordinates, U and uh, then click the graph, obviously. Grab ourselves another scalar, we'll call this the UV multi, and then hold in M and click for a multiplier, and we'll set our scalar here to one by default. Plug these guys in, hook this up to the UVs of our texture, and that way we can control the tiling scale of our normal map. I will also, let's, we'll set this uh, refraction value up here to one, say, and we'll chuck this back in the input here. We'll hit save. And uh, yeah, we'll let that uh, let that save for us. And you can copy down the material and if, you, if you'd like to follow along as we're going. We have a few more things that we can play with now. So let's check it out in the content browser. So here we go. So we have our, our nice normal map is giving us this nice ripply, you know, ripply textured effect here. And we can swap this out uh, for, for any other texture that we want. Um, I will make that a parameter in a moment. For now though, we'll have a look at refraction and our UV multi. If I lower our UV multi, we can make this effect a bit more, a bit more obvious, a bit more, uh, a bit higher, higher scale. Or we go the other way, and then we can make it much more, much more fine, and we still get that nice, nice Fresnel effect on our, on our uh, glass shader. Oh, where am I going? There we go. Uh, let's see. I might pull this up a little bit, or now I'll pull it down. We'll have a look with the character in a sec. So let's just real quick. We'll jump back into our uh, glass texture here. Grab our texture sample. Right click, and hit convert to parameter, and we'll call this normal. And then we'll save that. And this way we can set our uh, texture here, our normal map in our material instance over here with our settings. So super fast configurable uh, glass shader. Although uh, once, it's, once it's saved, uh, we'll have a little talk about some of the stats. Man, it, uh, it starts to take a little bit of time to compile here <laughs> from the side. But if we see down the bottom, uh, these are not particularly lightweight uh, materials. See, we're up in the sort of 169 uh, sort of instructions um, range. So you wouldn't want to use this, say, for VR, where you don't really want any materials to go up above about 150, I would say, at the absolute, absolute max. Uh, but with that done, and with this all saved out, we can close this. Let's head back to our map here. Uh, tick this box on our normal, and we can add ourselves some other normals. Oh, actually, why did I close it? Okay, well, let's open this back up. 
And now we can swap out our normal map for something else. For example, I don't know, let's go back to our texture pack here and see what, see what we have to play with. Uh, about this hex bulge, we'll see how that looks. <laughs> pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, the checker plate steel. A checker plate steel, glass material if you want to. Uh, we have just some general noise. Yeah, you know, things, things like this, whatever takes you fancy. Um, let's see, the, the, the last thing I want to talk about is to add, uh, uh, I, I want to say texture, but it really it's, it's more of um, stains, stains to the, to the glass. Uh, anyway, we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll add ourselves another texture here. It's just holding T and click. Uh, I'll right click this, we'll convert it to a parameter. I'm just going to call it mask. And the texture that I want um, down here, it will be, I have a texture called medium grunge, or grunge medium. There we go, we'll set that. I'll also grab these three nodes here, these uh, texture coordinate multiply nodes. We'll copy that and paste those. I want to rename this scalar to UV normal multi and uh, this one up here to the UV mass multi. All right. We'll plug these into the UVs here. And we'll also grab ourselves another multiply. Just hold an M and click and multiply our tint, our color parameter here by the main uh, main output of our mask. And I'll make this a little bit neater so we can see a little more clearly. And plug this multiply into base color. So there, there is our material. And uh, this will be our, our final material, I think. I think we've uh, covered the basics of glass for today. But anyway, give that a save. And then we'll hop back over to our content browser here. So let's grab our instance, uh, let's reset some of these. So we'll get our orange pill back, uh, we'll enable our mask, uh, reset our UV normal. We also have this new value here, this UV mask multi, which we can crank up or down as we want. So we'll crank it a little bit like that. Oh, and our tint as well, which we'll set back to back to our normal glass value. So the, the mask here, in fact, if we say set our UV normal multi here to zero, so we're not using the normal, we can see what the what the mask is doing to us. And we can even, uh, where's our, uh, Fresnel, uh, yeah, we can lower our Fresnel and we can sort of more clearly see the way that the uh, the mask is affecting the, the glass. Uh, but we'll reset these guys to normal. You can see how we can, uh, we can manipulate things like, um, well, if I wanted to add, say, scratches, I believe I've got a scratch texture, scratch map fine. Yeah, that'll be slightly more difficult to see maybe, but if we drop our normal back, yeah, you can start to get a better idea of how those, how these things interact. And we can do more things too, like we can add another multiply here and just crank up these values if you want, sort of more, uh, I don't know how to describe, more sort of distinct, more high contrast in your, in your, in your masking over here. But it's entirely up to you, entirely up to how you want to use it. The last thing that I'll cover is refraction, which I brought up a, a little bit, a little earlier. Uh, it's this value here, which is going to determine the way the light is uh, warped um, from beyond the glass. And it looks like this. And you can look up, uh, there's plenty online of the real world refraction values of different uh, different things, such as water or um, different thicknesses of glass and that sort of thing. I tend to just leave it either very, very close to one or, or not use it at all, honestly. <laughs> but... You know, your mileage might vary. It might be useful to you. Uh, I've never found it to be particularly um, a particularly sort of compelling effect, but you never know. It might come in handy at some point and it's worth knowing about. So, as a, well, as a final thing, let's just see a play here. We'll have a look. You can see how, the, how it works. In fact, I might have to change my character a little bit because our camera boom needs to be ignoring collision. So we can turn off that collision test and that should work. So we'll compile that, hit play. Yeah, and you can see now we can stand behind our glass. So the refraction is playing havoc with how uh, things are visible behind that glass. So if we jump back over here, we'll turn our refraction back to, we'll go one or maybe one, I think water is 1.5 or I don't know, we'll go, we'll go like 1.1. Hit play. See, so we're getting like a, a little bit of, a little bit of uh, refraction there, but not, not too much. And we can see the glass is, uh, is affecting things there just nicely. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something. And uh, definitely check out uh, Beard Games on YouTube. It's definitely worth a look. Uh, this, this fundamental series here is actually really interesting. 
if you're a pro or if you're a beginner, there might be something in there that you can pick up on that you didn't know before. So definitely worth a look. Definitely, definitely worth a look. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. See ya.